singing when you <laughs> when you shut down. All right, all right. We're of course in Exodus 20, and we're going through the Ten Commandments. We're doing a study on those, and uh, I hope you're enjoying them. I'm enjoying them. Again, we did it several years ago. We did a we did a study of the of the Ten Commandments, going through each and every one of them, and uh, we did all eleven of them. <laughs> I'm glad somebody called it George. <laughs> Did all ten of them. Uh, you know, I was in Washington, D.C. several years ago, and uh, I went to the White House, and I saw these signs forbidding photographs. Uh, they, they said the reason they said it was for national security, but we know it's to sell more postcards, okay, over in the gift shop. Uh, I understand that even the Biltmore House, they did the same thing uh, as well, no, no pictures. What we're going to look at tonight is the same thing here. God don't want any pictures. Okay, he don't want any pictures. Uh, you see, you see these portraits of him. I, I don't know how they ever drew that. I don't know how they ever knew what he looked like. Yeah, uh, he don't want you, he don't want his picture taken. Okay, he don't want nothing taken. Nothing of, of heaven, earth, but hey, below the earth, <laughs> in the water, whatever. He don't want none of that. Okay, and these verses make it pretty clear that God doesn't want his picture taken. Okay. Nor does he want a, a statues made or any other type of image made, okay, that you're going to worship, okay? Many have, many have misunderstood this commandment. They, they, have, they have taken it to mean that God condemns taking a photograph or a picture, okay? Jehovah Witnesses are some that do that. Some feel that, 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 that there shouldn't be any art or statues of any kind, any dolls, any stuffed animals, et cetera, et cetera, that would all be forbidden. Uh, that view, however, is simply added, adding to the Word of God, okay? The commandment here was given for the, for the sole reason of preventing men from inventing objects to be used for worship of their God, okay? So tonight I want us to I, I just like to help us understand this passage. It, it, it may be hard for us uh, to, to really uh, get it into our head because we've never probably been exposed to true idol worship, okay? To comprehend it is, is kind of difficult for us. But even though we haven't seen what I call being exposed to idol worship, we do worship idols. We've got our own little idol to worship. We'll get on that later. There are, there are truths given in these verses uh, that we all need, I think, all need to learn. So tonight, I, with the Lord's help, I want us to study this passage. And I, I just kind of put that to it. I said, uh, we'll call it No Pictures, Please. No Pictures, Please. Okay. God don't want it. God don't want that. Okay. Now let's look at the restrictions of deity here. Okay. The command to follow. God says, let's, let's read verse number three, uh, excuse me, four if you will with me, okay? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, okay? Or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth, okay? Let's read it again. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. We have a lot of controversy sometimes about uh, people who they have angels sitting around, okay? Little, little ceramic angels or whatever kind, wood. Uh, I saw some recently that were made of, whoops, excuse me, made of wood. Carved out angels of wood. Okay, I'm not going to go there, but I, I don't. I don't. We don't know. Angels don't have a. They don't have a gender. Okay, we don't know much about angels, but we know what we know enough that we know. Hey, they they really don't have a gender per se. Okay, so you see all these women angels. Okay, we don't get off on all this, but again, that's what this is saying. In heaven. In earth, beneath, or in the waters, okay, okay, as well. Let's go on. Right here, a command to follow. God says in no uncertain terms, 
no uncertain term, that producing any image intended to receive worship is forbidden. Those old things sitting on their dashboard, okay? Okay? Look at the, look at the, the here's the custom that we've got to flee right here now. Since the early days of man's civilization, he has invented, he has invented to himself idols, y'all. And, 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 or, or, or we call it representations of his certain gods that he wants to worship. Idolatry always seemed to be the, the, the problem or the weakness of, of, of the Israelite children. The first manif manifestation we saw of it is over in Exodus 32, 1 through about 14, 15 there. With, their, with that incident of where they, they made that golden calf, okay? While, while Moses was out of the picture for a while. Uh, Israel's idolatry was rooted in the fact that their, their hearts were turned away from God. They, they were turned away from God. This, this, this violates, again, this goes back to last week, this violates the first commandment, okay? We're to love God, okay? There's also seemed that it seemed like they, they kind of manifested themselves in, in, in dependence of, of Moses, kind of made Moses their God, okay? Then they tried to spiritualize their era by equating the worship of the calf with the worship of Jehovah God. So they're really messing up, really getting to mess up now. When a person needs, when a person needs some idol or representation of God to assist in worship, it, it, is, it is a sure indicator of the lack of, spirit, of their spiritual life uh, their, their, uh, as an individual. They're as far away from God as they can get. They're as far away from God as they can get. You need to stay, like he said in the very first, loving him. Loving him. And him alone. He'll be the top first on the on the on the list. Okay? And then everything else comes below that. And you can put that in any order you want to. But you've got to have him first. Okay. Look at the look at the change the, the fix our heart the here. It says idolatry uh, idolaters generally believe that their idols are truly God. They really believe that. I mean you think about a little carved out of wood, a little idol, okay? And they believe that is truly their God. I mean, it can't speak. It, it, it can't do anything. It just sit there, okay? See, it's proven by, by their bowing down to it. They're praying to it. They're sacrificing to it. They're giving to it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's even an, an installation ceremony with some where they where they li literally take the, the deity and invite it in to the idol uh, to take up residence, okay? Kind of like we do with the Holy Spirit. But they do it with a little piece of wood or a little piece of plastic or a little piece of whatever, okay? You and I should resolve that we will never, ever allow no image to take the place of God in our hearts, okay? Man is forbidden from this foolishness and that kind of activity, okay? Look at the reason for this demand. Uh, their inferior nature, okay? No matter how hard man tries, he can never properly represent, uh, hey, 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 represent, uh, reproduce God, okay? You, you'll see it, uh, like I say, your paintings and all this, the, the, where they got that, I don't have a clue, Okay? But really, God's a spirit, y'all. John 4, 24 says, God's a spirit. And they, hey, and they that worship him must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's a spirit, okay? God is a spirit. Man, is, man in his zeal to, to worship or honor God has sought a, a, a faulty way of doing so in these images of him. Almighty God, y'all, he's not limited to stone and wood and plastic and, and, and even, and even painted, paint on a canvas, all right? I, I've seen people have those paintings of Jesus, okay? And I've always wondered how they knew what he looked like. Where did they get that from? 
right here, out of their head, what they thought. As hard as man may, might try, y'all, he can never properly depict God or, or even Jesus, okay? No matter what form that image might take, it will, it will always be inferior to the true, to the true and living God. Listen to, listen to Psalms 115, 5, 8. Look here. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses ha have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but their hands, ha but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they, uh, hey, <laughs> through their voice, through their throat. Hey, they that make them are likened to them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Okay. When they, these idols come into people's lives, they become like those idols. I'll just give you a quick example. Let's just say that you, uh, Brother George, I'll use mine, your, your hobby. Let's say that hobby takes us over golf, okay? Everything we do, I mean, we're going to be, we're going to be sitting in front of the television set on Sunday morning when the golf tournament's on. We're going to be going to the golf course every day, two or three times a week if we can. We're going to be buying new clubs and make us think we're going to be better golfers and don't do anything. It, it, it just takes us over. It takes you over. Your idol takes you over. And that's some of our idols. Our, our boats and, and golf clubs and, and, and cars and, and, and houses and different things, okay? So again, so again, that we, we think, well, yeah, we don't have idols. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. If you pull out your keys out of your purse or pocket, you'll see a bunch of little idols on there. You'll find all kinds of little idols on there. Listen to Jeremiah 10, 1 through 7, what it says. Hear the word which the Lord speaketh unto, unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of, of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the, for the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest to work of the, the work of the hands of the workman with an axe. They, they, hey, they deck it with silver and with gold. Uh, imagine what they're doing here now. They've cut a tree down. They make a little wood idol out of it. Now they're going to cover it up with, with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails or with hammers that it move not. They are upright. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. This thing can't speak. It can't do nothing. They must need. Hey, must needs be born because they. Hey, they can. Uh, they cannot go. But but hey, be not afraid of them. Be not afraid of them. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it, is it in them to do good. For, hey, for as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great and mighty. Who would not fear thee, uh, O uh, King of nations? Uh, for to thee doth it, uh, doth it appear, appear uh, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations and, all, and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee, unto God, Almighty God. These idols are nothing. They, they can do nothing. They, 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 again, it says they can't speak. They can't, do, they can't do anything. But people worship them. Okay? They worship them. Back here, they work, that's what he's saying. Back here, they worship those. We have new idols. We have different kind of idols. Romans 1, 2, and 3 says, and, 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 hey, in charge the glory of, of the uncorruptible God and, and to excuse me, and change, the, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and to four-footed four beasts and creeping things, likening liken unto a God. How can, how can a little man portray a big, mighty God? How can they do that? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Again, we're looking at we're looking at this passage that says, "Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image." Okay. Look on their insidious nature. That word is just a fifty cent word. Means crafty. Okay. 
God's desire uh, for man is that every man enter into a living, personal relationship, intimate relationship with him. Nothing else. Again, go back to, back to the number one. Loving God. Putting God above everything else. Above anybody else. Okay? He doesn't want us giving our devotion to any kind of false god or idol. He doesn't, hey, he wants us to be intimate with him. Intimate with him, loving him. Okay? You see, we do not need some image to aid us in our worship to God. We have an open line with him. We have an open line with him. We, hey, we, uh, we have a person on the inside. We've been talking about this quite a bit lately. But a person on the inside who will guide us, empower us, and help us in our worship of God. John 14, 16, listen to it. It says, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Jesus is about to check out. He's going to be crucified. He's going to die, okay? And he's telling these disciples over in 14, just read it last week on Sunday, but he's telling them that he's going to send another comforter. Jesus was the comforter, Brother Roy, then with them. But now he's, he's gone. He's going to be leaving. But he's now going to give them another comforter that he may abide, hey, may abide with you forever. See, if you're saved tonight, you've got that comforter. And he will abide with you forever until the day you take your last breath or we check out of here in the rapture, okay? He's going to abide with you forever, forever, okay? On over in John 16, 13, it says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he, for he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall, hey, he shall, for whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's what the Holy Spirit's all about. I want to, I'm getting so excited about doing a study on the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, because I think it's something we, we give little thought to sometimes. Yet it's right here. It's right here. It, it's that close to you. I mean, it's closer to you than your wife. It's closer to you than your, hey, your children. It's closer to you than anything you can think about. Okay? And yet we take it somewhat so lightly, and I think we, we don't give it a whole lot of thought. God is, God is willing to award, the, award us uh, if we will not mess with these idols. Let anything, in other words, let anything come before him. That's what this means. That's what this is all about. Let nothing, Miss Pat, come before God. Don't worship anything but the true living God. Okay? Okay? Let's move on. According to verse 5, God is a jealous God. Okay? The, the, uh, the Israelites were, God, hey, uh, were God's people. And he would, he would tolerate he, he would tolerate them to some extent because he had a relationship with them. Imagine, though, imagine, though, a man uh, flirting with another woman in the, presence with, in the presence of his wife, okay? That's what he's saying here. Don't, don't, don't do that. I'm a jealous God. We said last week, I think it was, his name is jealous. You think he don't get upset over that, you're wrong. How would you, wife, think of your husband flirting with some woman in front of you? How would you, husband, think of some, hey, <laughs> some, some, <laughs> flirting with some. <laughs> She's a jealous woman. <laughs> He's a jealous God, y'all. And, and y'all, that don't, the Bible tells us what we want to do is we want to please God. And everything we do, we want to please God. I don't want to upset Him. I don't want to. I don't want to make Him angry at me for something. I want to please Him. I, I love Him. And, and 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 hey, it's kind of like your wife. You know, a happy wife's a happy life. If you please her, you know, 
maybe flowers every once in a while, maybe some candy, or take her out to dinner, or have date night, get the kids, give the kids a mosquito, and let her keep them pastured for about a week. No. <laughs> hey, and have a date night. I mean, that, 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 see, that's, that's pleasing. God, God, will not, God will have no idols, y'all. No images, no person, no things, no stuff taking their rightful place in your heart, on, on the throne of your heart. He ought to be on the throne of your heart. Isaiah 45, 5 says, I am the Lord. And there is, no, hey, and there is none else, okay? There is no God beside, hey, beside me, he says. Hey, that's where he wants to be, number one. We go back to we go back to last week. Go back to number one, but we're now in number two. But number two is just uh, just carry on just carrying on from number one. We must hey we must search our hearts y'all and, and and see and see where we are with this matter of loving God and having no nothing before Him. Let's look at the results of of now of disobedience, the burden of God's judgment. When we, when we elevate anything or anyone to the place of, of, of Godhood, we'll find out probably too late that neither it nor they will be able to protect us from the awesome wrath of God. Over in, over in uh, Psalms uh, 59, 8, But thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shalt have, thou shalt have all of the heathen, hey, in this uh, derision, okay? He don't like it. He don't like it. And you're you're playing with you're playing with with danger when you when you do something like this. Y'all know y'all know what happened to that. I think it was Dagon, that uh, Philistine idol god, whatever they called it. They had, and they put the Ark of the Covenant in there with it over in First Samuel. Found it down on his face. Found it down on his face, Miss Alice. Now who done that? God. He said, that, uh -uh, that don't fit here. That don't fit here at the ark. That don't fit here. See, he, he don't want, if you're carrying around the Holy Ghost in you, but then you got some little idol on your dashboard, that little idol on the dashboard may fall off one day. I don't know. Happen to tumble off one day. May lead you into a wreck. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> Judgment will always come for the, uh, the, for the idolater, I guarantee you. Let's look at the success. Uh, let's look at the blight on, on this, uh, of this generation. God is not saying that he will punish the children for the parents' sin. In Deuteronomy, let me read to you, Deuteronomy 24, 16, says, the fathers, look here now, the fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be under hey, every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Okay? He's saying that sin that, that, that sin leaves its mark many times on the children. Okay? And it does. It does. You, you've seen it. I was raised up around a father who gambled all the time. Thank God. I, I, it taught me a lesson uh, that, that I did not want to gamble. I didn't want to gamble. Hey, I, 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 I was around parents who drank. They drank every, every Saturday night, you know, every Saturday night. They, they had fights. They cursed. They done a lot of that stuff. And, I, and it rubbed on to me, Miss Gale, for a long time. I drank, I cursed, you know, I, I didn't fight with my wife, but I fought with others, with others. But it all rubbed off on me. It took, it took me several years, so I was 29 years old when I got saved to get away from all that, 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 that thinking and that lifestyle. And that's what usually happens. It takes, it takes a long time sometimes for, to get away from the abuse and get away from that kind of walk and that kind of talk and so on. All it takes generations to break that cycle that's already been established by the parents, okay? We see it all the time, these kids on the bus over here. 
We've seen it over the years with bus kids. I was telling a story that I don't know, I think it's Tim and Cindy I was talking to about uh, back over middle Tennessee. Uh, I can remember when go over at the projects when the projects were here, they tore it all down now pretty much. But but we didn't we didn't knock on the door. We didn't do anything, Miss Alice. You know this to be a fact. The door was wide open on a Sunday morning. And you'd walk into that room, the small, and there was Daddy drunk on the couch. You go up the steps, go in there, and Mom was in the bed there. She's out, knocked out. You'd dress the kid, get them ready, take them out, and put them on the bus, take them to church. They didn't even know they were gone. But let me tell you what, they didn't even care that they were gone. You became a babysitting service for them. But the kids got something. The kids got a, 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 hey, a hot biscuit when they got to church. They got, hey, maybe some milk, something to drink. At home, they weren't going to get nothing. Okay? And that kind of lifestyle was being taught to them. That's all. See, when I grew up, I, I, didn't, I thought that's the way everybody lived. I thought everybody went out after they got off work on Saturday. My daddy worked on Saturday. He got off the Red Road about noon with a little envelope full of some money. And, and, and hey, here's what I thought. You went out, and you got drunk, and you came in about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. You started fixing ham, ham and eggs and biscuits and, you know, and gravy. And you ate that, and you went to bed and went to sleep and woke up 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. Okay. Now, many is the time that Mom and them would see that we were at Westview Baptist Church. The kids would go. We'd had, we'd, we'd had to get dressed and go. But half the time, they weren't dressing us to go. They weren't worried about getting us to church. They, they'd had a hard night. They'd had a hard night. When I, got, when, I, when I started dating Sherry, her daddy done the same thing. That's what he did. He'd come in drunk on Saturday night. Start cooking up. I hate one night, I started pressure cooking a rabbit. And the lid blew off. <laughs> he didn't have a lid on tight enough. He blew rabbit all over the place. But anyway, a rabbit on the walls, a rabbit on the ceiling, a rabbit everywhere. Hey, that, see, that's what drunk people do. That's what drunk people do, y'all. There's, there, hey, there's laughing drunks. There's crying drunks. I can assure you there's fighting drunks. If I said Glenn Clymer, I was with him one night, went out to 41 Club, wasn't in there five minutes, busting heads, that's all we was doing. Everybody busting heads. That's all we doing. Stayed there five minutes. It started as soon as we went in. Somebody saw somebody they didn't like. And that was it. Hey, see that, that lifestyle, y'all, that all that moves over to the children. But the children ain't got to pay for that sin. Okay? They ain't got to pay for that sin. They got to pay for their own sin. They ain't got to pay for that sin. Judgment's coming, y'all. Judgment day's coming. Romans 5, 20 says, Moreover, the law entereth that the offense might abound. But where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. Amen. Ain't that good? All right, we'll stop here. That's number two. We'll get into number three next week, okay? Now again on the 27th of September, we will not have a Wednesday night service as far as this Bible study. We'll have our Jubilee. Jubilee starts on the 24th and we'll run through the 29th. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night, okay? Lineup is great. We've got a great lineup. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time. Uh, so y'all mark your calendars now. Be ready to come. Every night you can come. Come be here with us, okay? We're going to do a prayer list now. I do not have 